This is Matador News, and these are today's headlines. The Florida House of Representatives is voting on a bill to allow some teachers to bring guns into the classroom. And comedian Bill Cosby's lawyers are in court today trying to prevent his accusers from testifying. Hello, and welcome to Matador News. I'm Rico Bruce. And I'm Leonard Tusher. More than 1,000 children have been killed or injured across Syria this year. UNICEF reports 342 children were killed in January and February. Another 100 children were killed on Monday, making it the deadliest day there since the United Nations Security Council passed the nationwide ceasefire resolution February 24th. Children are dying. We should all stand together and I hope we can help children uh, around the world so children can live in peace and we should be strong to help them so we can live in peace and all of us be happy. UNICEF Regional Communications Chief Julia Tilma says sitting in underground shelters has become the new norm. Activist footage has shown the shelters as filthy and ill-equipped. CSUN President Diane Harrison addresses the hoax in a campus Y email. Matador News reporter Claudia Forrest has more on the story. Harrison sent an email last night about the video posted on Snapchat last month showing a, gu a gun on campus. This is the scene where the alleged gunman shot the video. In the email, Harrison says many students wish the campus had gotten an alert sooner. Many students have been questioning the way the incident was handled. So I feel like the professors didn't handle it as professionally as they should have and as seriously as it should have been. Um, therefore, this whole situation I don't think was handled seriously. If I was there, I would have wanted to have a shutdown of the school, you know, and get us out safely as soon as possible. And a lot of us were scared and when they just said it was a hoax with no explanation of what was going on, like a lot of us were just scared to be on campus still and we're just kind of questioning, you know, how police were handling it and I, th I think campus should have just been closed down completely. A summary of the incident in the school's response is available in the email. See, some police have been working with the Los Angeles City Attorney to file charges against the former Garda World Armored Truck Transport employee, who company officials say is no longer working for them. Now back to Leonard in the studio. In what may be a breakthrough, North Korea seems to be offering to denuclearize its missiles to engage in talks with the United States and South Korea. Kim's negotiators say that the country will seize any new nuclear tests and missile launches. The announcement comes after South Korea's top security official returned to Seoul from a meeting with North Korean officials. The two countries also discussed what Kim Jong-un is calling a new history of national reunification. President Trump, who's called North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, Little Rocket Man, tweeted that a serious effort is being made by both the parties, but the U.S. is ready to go hard in either direction. A Russian transfer plane crashed at Russia's airbase in Syria, killing all 39 on board. The Defense Ministry says the plane crashed 1,600 feet from the runway, carrying 33 passengers and six crew members. The ministry says the reaction for the crash, according to preliminary information, could have been technical. A Russian military jet crashed while trying to take off from Hamim in October last year, killing two crew members. The Florida Senate passed a bill to put restrictions on gun sales in the aftermath of the Parkland shooting. The bill also creates new restrictions in rifle sales and allows some teachers to carry guns during school hours. The 20 to 18 vote came after a few hours of an emotional debate, even for some who weren't too happy with it. The Senate also amended the bill to limit which teachers were eligible to carry guns to those who have gone through law enforcement training first. One of the parents of the fallen victims is calling for change. What we want to know here is how we're going to make our kids safe, going to school every day, and not just our kids, all of your kids and all your grandkids. The Florida House is considering the bill now. The legislative session ends March 9th, so the new bill would need a pass by then. Washington becomes the first state to pass law protecting net neutrality. 
The new law requires Internet providers to disclose information about their management practices, performances, and commercial terms. Governor Jay Inslee signed the law and said the new measure would protect any open Internet in Washington, setting up a legal fight with the Trump administration. We've led the world in commercial airlines, we've led the world in software, and today we're leading the world in net neutrality. The Federal Communications Commission has voted to allow companies such as Comcast, AT&T, and Verizon to control what people watch and see on the Internet. The FCC's new rules are expected to go into effect this spring. Washington state laws will take effect in June. In East Los Angeles, authorities are searching for the gunman suspected of shooting two women, killing one of them. Deputies received an anonymous call reporting a gunshot victim. A Los Angeles County Sheriff says they found two women suffering from gunshot wounds after arriving at the scene. Authorities say one of the victims were taken to a local hospital in critical condition, later listed in stable condition. The second woman, who has not been identified, was pronounced dead at the scene. Authorities say it was unclear if there were more shooters involved in the incident, which is believed to be gang-related. Two Los Angeles police officers were bitten by a suspect after responding to an alarm at a Tarzana AT&T store. According to a LAPD, the officers were struggling to arrest a man when he bit two of them in the arm. The two officers were taken to the hospital, one suffering multiple bite wounds, while the second officer was treated for bite marks. The suspect was a 30-year-old man who also was treated for injuries. After the officer used a stun gun to detain him, witnesses say the man looked suspicious so the store employee activated the store's panic alarm. Police say they believe the man was under the influence of drugs. Elton John's 26th Academy Awards party raised almost $6 million for the AIDS Foundation. The Tony gathering in West Hollywood drew in celebrities from film, music, TV, and other realms. Among them were Miley Cyrus, Spike Lee, Lionel Richie, Ricky Martin, and many others. Attendees were invited to text in pledges as the Oscar telecast was displayed. Audience members were informed it was one of the rare events where it was okay to spend the night texting. Elton John and David Furnish, his husband and event co-creator, thank their guests for their contributions to the foundation. They've raised more than $400 million for AIDS care and research since 1992. Now let's go to Ricardo Sandoval with the latest in health. Thanks, Rico. Lyft is announcing a goal to cut the health care transportation gap in half by 2020. The new feature will be called Lyft Concierge. This feature can help patients get to their medical appointments on time. Lyft is partnering with Auscripts, allowing doctors and hospitals to request rides for their patients. Auscripts is an electronic health record company that helps an estimated 7 million patients. The company partnered with Hitch Health to offer free rides for non-emergency patients. Lyft says it wants to eliminate <coughs> transportation barriers to health care altogether. A new study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association shows opioids don't work any better than Tylenol. The company compared 240 randomized patients on the level of overall function and intensity of pain from back and hip or knee osteoarthritis. Over the 12-month trial, patients prescribed opioids showed no difference in pain-related functions compared to the patients taking non-opioids. Surprisingly, the patients prescribed non-opioids showed significantly less pain intensity after the 12-month period. McDonald's is announcing its quarter pounders will now have fresh beef without preservatives. The change will be effective starting this May only in the U.S. stores except for Hawaii and Alaska. The, the switch will not apply to Big Macs, regular hamburgers, or cheeseburgers. McDonald's has changed its ingredients and menu to change the view of customers about their food. The fresh beef patty switch is targeted towards rival fast food restaurants who have already started using healthier ingredients. Now let's go to Lauren Sinfuegos with the latest in business. United Healthcare will be passing on drug maker rebates to some customers next year, giving a break to those taking expensive prescriptions. The nation's biggest health insurer says only people covered by certain employer-sponsored health plans will be able to collect the rebates, which could total anywhere from a few dollars to several hundred, depending on the drug. These rebates could lower deductibles or co-insurance payments. This plan will, be will apply to about 7 million people who have coverage through an employer. It doesn't apply to the insurer's individual coverage. House Speaker Paul Ryan says President Trump should back away on his planned tariffs on steel and, and aluminum imports. Ryan says Trump should go after the abusers who are dumping low-priced steel on U.S. markets. We think the smart approach, the best approach, and the president's right to point out that there are abusers. There clearly is 
dumping and transshipping of steel and aluminum. That's absolutely happening. There's a big overcapacity problem. Let's go focus on that. Let's go focus on the abusers of that. And that is why we think that the proper approach is a more surgical approach so that we do not have unintended con Trump has complained that bad trade agreements hurt American businesses and that these tariffs will help. President Trump says he might exempt Canada and Mexico depending on negotiations over the NAFTA trade agreement. Amazon is stopping its sales of Google's Nest products. This move stirs the war between both Amazon and Google's smart home products. Amazon's decision is part of their plan to give Alexa a push in the smart home device market. A source from Amazon says the decision has nothing to do with the quality of Nest products. Let's go back to Ricardo with the latest in sports. Thanks, Lauren. Kobe Bryant has accomplished many things in his basketball career. He's a five-time NBA champion, 18-time All-Star, NBA MVP, and a two-time Olympic gold medalist. And now, he's an Academy Award winner. Dear basketball, Glenn Key and Kobe! This is the first Oscar and nomination for Glenn Keane and Kobe Bryant. The Black Mambo won an Oscar for Best Animated Short Film. The film, Dear Basketball, was written back in 2015 when Kobe announced his retirement. Bryant says winning an Oscar is a better feeling than winning an NBA championship. He is the first athlete and African-American to win the award. Cavaliers All-Star Kevin Love admits to suffering an in-game panic attack earlier in the season. In an essay for the Players' Tribune, Love explained what he, felt, what he had felt like during the attack. Love says he broke down on the bench, ran to the locker room, and felt like he was going to die as he was gasping for air on the floor. The 29-year-old says he had family issues, had no sleep, and his team was struggling with a 4-5 and five record at the time. For more on mental health issues here, here at CSUN, Matador News reporter Nick Logan is in the newsroom. Thanks, Ricardo. Whether it's talked about or not, many students may face depression or suicidal thoughts. It's important for students to have support and someone to talk to. CSUN's Blues Project provides 24-7 counseling services. Peer education coordinator Samir Homaway says their main goal is to focus on each individual independently. Uh, we do 14 different workshops typically that address special populations. So what is uh, mental health and how is mental health discussed amongst black and African-American students versus Latino students uh, versus students with disabilities? Um, what are some topics where there's some intersectionality? So how does substance abuse play into how depression is experienced with an individual? The Blues Project has an office in Bramian Hall, room 520, and an after-hour number for urgent care assistance. They also have workshops and events where they reach out to those in need. One fundraiser will take place tomorrow by Sierra Hall. So the fundraiser is going to be in the Sierra Hall quad. It's going to be just selling nachos with cheese and uh, chili and some soda and drinks uh, and really promoting our event that's coming up April 16th, letting students know that we're out here, we're having these conversations about different topics. It may be hard to discuss, but the Blues Project is dedicated to helping CSUN students with any counseling they need. Now let's go back to Lauren with the latest in entertainment. This year's Oscars ratings were the lowest in 44 years. This is the first year the Academy Awards viewership fell below 30 million people, drawing in an average of only 26.5 million viewers. The Academy Awards weren't the only award show this season to get low ratings. The Golden Globes ratings dropped by 24%, while the Grammys dropped by 5%. The highest Oscars rating in history were in 1998, when Titanic won Best Picture. In Philadelphia, Bill Cosby's lawyers are fighting in court today to block 19 of his accusers from testifying against him at his sexual assault trial. Lawyers say those accusers are bringing up old allegations that might sway away the jury against Cosby. Prosecutors are pushing Cosby's April retrial to consider him as one of the biggest serial predators in Hollywood. Cosby's lawyers Becky James says she doesn't want the 19 accusers to testify because it would subject Cosby to many small trials. Now let's go back to Rico with weather. Thanks, Lauren. It's a beautiful day in Northridge. It's currently a cool 68 degrees. The rest of the day will be mostly sunny with a high of 76 degrees. But bring out your jackets tonight because it's going to be a low of 48 degrees into the evening. We'll have cloudy days for the rest of the week with rain coming in over the weekend. Every junk food has its day and Oreo is no exception. Today is National Oreo Day, and to celebrate, the brand is giving away free candy bars. To get the free candy bar, fans must fill out a form on the company's website. Nabisco says it will give out the coupon to the first one million people to complete the form. 
or you'll begin sending out an email with the coupons in mid-March. Thank you for watching Matador News. I'm Leonard Tusher. I'm Rico Bruce. I'm Ricardo Sandoval. And I'm Lawrence Fuegos.